Okay, welcome back again, U.S. Virgin Islands Chess. It's Boxing Day uh, today, December 26, 2020. We're still working on the U.S. Virgin Islands expansion project for our national program, and everything is going as planned. I have another game for everyone here from the FIDE Online Arena. My opponent rated about 1,200. Uh, Roberto Carlos Mediero from Portugal uh, started the game here with the white pieces in the Free Roam Arena. FIDE rated online, not over the board rated, but online rated game, as per the playlist, for usual guys. Games I have for you, my wins with black pieces, and sometimes white as well, depending on what the server awards me. D4, Knight F6, Indian game, and Bishop F4, I forget if this is the London system, or if the London system is E4, uh, Bishop C4, maybe like a reverse, I gotta look up the name of this opening, I'll let you guys know in the comments below when I find out what this is, okay? So d5, now closing the center. So guys, what are the most played moves in this position after uh, somebody plays knight to f6? Uh, c4 is a book move. Uh, get into maybe like a king's Indian, knight f3. There's e3 also, which is good. Uh, some cases we also see, I see some grandmasters play knight b to, uh, yeah, knight to d2. Anyways, we saw my opponent go for this early bishop, and d5, so it's a good move. e3, let's see how e3 looks. e3 is a book move in this position, okay? So, bishop f5, bishop d3, another book move, captures, captures, queen captures. And now black gains a tempo. Black can either play uh, knight to c6, which earlier when I went over this with the engine, it said that uh, knight from b to d7 was better. Now it's saying knight to c6 was better after it took time to look at the evaluation, so okay. Uh, queen to b5 is an okay move, or a decent move. Yeah, the engine says that's a good move, and also uh, bishop b3 is a good move. Uh, excuse me, queen b3 is a good move. So now rook to b8, the best move in the position, now just defending uh, the b7 pawn, giving it some more coverage, and now knight f3, developing the uh, kingside knight, so it's move 7, and now a6. Okay, so kicking the queen back to another square. What is the best square uh, for the king to go to? Right, d3 it suggests, and uh, yeah, d3 is the safest square. We did not see queen b6, guys. That was a misclick. It said we saw queen to a4. So queen to a4 was not the most recommended square, but my opponent played it anyway. Still keeping an eye on the pin here on c6. I think that was his goal, okay? So, now queen to d7. Okay, now guys, without looking at the algebraic uh, notation, find the best move for white. What should white play um, in this position? What's the best move? Um, right, knight b to d2 is the best move if you found it. Knight to, F, knight to c3 and uh, short castles is also the best move, okay? So those are all good moves. White's gonna be a little more developed and uh, I think after, yeah, I think, no, b5 is not good here. e6 is the best move in the position. And now after all this development now, um, yeah, then this is good. And then you guys just, you have a chess game here. And this is a chess game, right? Just four knights, rooks, black castles a little late. But it looks uh, pretty, pretty even. Looks like a pretty even chess game. Okay? Maybe both players wanting to draw in that sort of game. Instead, guys, playing, now back to our move here. The least recommended move by the engine uh, after queen to d7, and my opponent went for knight to e5. Guys, and we, can we find out now why knight to e5 is a big, big no-no in this position, in this opening, on move 9? Why is knight to e5 so, so, so bad? Well, I'll show you guys exactly why. If it makes sense now, knight into e5, and um, now I suppose the correct move would just be to uh, either drop back or capture the queen. The engine says now, okay, the best move is just to capture the queen. You're actually taking back now with the knight? And yes, uh, White has just given up a whole 
knight for no compensation. So black has up a whole knight. Okay. And in doing so, white says, okay, well, I'm going to continue play. And I saw this with uh, bishop to c7 attacking now the rook on that b8 dark square. And now attacking the dark squared bishop. Bishop drops back to its f4 spot now in the game we saw. So now, uh, getting to the second rank, rook captures on c2. Now black is plus four uh, in this position of a minor piece and a pawn. And even though black is plus four in this position, it's not all completely said and done. We have to sort of meander our way through this uh, middle game now and transition, transition into a nice, safe, sound end game. Black does have a problem here. Uh, Black is still very undeveloped on the king side. These pawns have not been pushed yet. Uh, again, e6, e5, highly unrecommended. Not pushing any pawns now. Uh, don't touch any of the pawns is what the engine is saying. Well, in this position now because the rook is under attack. So now, guys, find the best move for black in the position. Or find what your, uh, what your operator played. Right, just rook captures on b2 now. Um, that's totally fine. And now maybe there's a little trouble for black here. Now that white plays the move rook a to c1. And after knight to b6 now, covering the check square, guys. Do we see how, how such nice prophylaxis here from your guys' operator just now defending the, uh, the check square? Well, in this position, the computer says, well, if you're going to pick up the horse, you need to move it to somewhere like a4, for example, if you're playing with black. Because now we're under attack. Guys, can you find the move that your instructor played in this position? So remember, I'm up a whole minor piece but it looks like black is still under some pressure on the king side. We want to figure out how to um, manipulate this game so that we don't lose any more material or positional initiative. We don't want to give white any positional initiative when it looks like in this position that white actually might have some positional initiative still. Okay? So let's see. E6. E6 was the best move. In the position now because it allows the dark squared bishop to get developed at some point for black but also now because white captured in this position on b6 by capturing the b2 pawn guys was was a good move now right that was why we captured b2 was because we knew that if the knight ended up going to a safe square like b6 for example guys just a lot of depth you know what i mean you guys you have to play with depth. You have to think about covering squares, um, countering better moves for your opponent, thinking about what they're going to play, and taking when you're supposed to take, covering uh, attack squares uh, with other minor pieces that you have, and doing all this in coordination with your own pieces, and that is chess. right? It is... Um, it is a very complicated puzzle at times, and in order for you to alleviate that, those complications, you oftentimes have to find ways to uh, defend by at attack by defending, and also in doing so creating complications for your opposition. And as we mentioned here, the c8 square, for example, is completely covered. Rook takes b2 is best because now it's going to defend that knight. As we mentioned, guys, that jumped to b6. So again, because just because black is up material here doesn't necessarily mean that the job is finished, guys. Remember, we said white could get positional initiative here, and that's why my opponent here from Portugal kept playing at 1,200. He wanted to keep playing. He didn't, he didn't just want to, but he knew that if he kept playing and, and put the right moves and maybe hoped that I made uh, an error in my prophylaxis, in my advanced defense, then there might be a chance that he could have some winning. So right, guys. The best move is to capture, not just capturing the pawn just for the sake of capturing, guys, but also after <coughs> my opponent swings his A rook to C1, defending the knight on B6 that's hopping over to cover the C8 square for the check, which is a deadly square now for black. Black could be in a lot of problems despite being up a whole minor piece in a pawn. And as we mentioned, bishop, bishop to C7, so very complicated chess, guys, very, very complicated. This is not easy to understand. Chess is like a foreign language if you don't um, have a grasp of what is being written, written, spoken of, or otherwise. So, back to the game now. Bishop to c7 now, and as we mentioned, 
capturing B2 was not just to gain material, but also positional uh, prophylaxis defense and continuing with e6 after bishop to c7, bishop into b6 now, rook captures, okay, we're fine. Uh, or are we? Okay, there's a check here uh, on c8. So guys, find the best move for the king in this position. What did, what did your operator play? King to d7? That's right. King to d7 is right because now the rook is under attack, and uh, the rook is not recommended to move. Yes, the best move after this is just to... Is, well, oh wow, the engine says don't swing the rook. The engine says don't swing the rook. The engine says the best move is just either b8 or a8. And you're always keeping uh, this bishop at bay here until you get to unleash uh, the fury, so to speak. So, if this was my game and this was what was played in the game, I would go uh, knight to f6. And if partner swung his uh, piece over here, I'd go for this now, and I mean, maybe he doesn't have to take, maybe he can just attack the pawn here, and then after this, okay, there's a check, king is recommended to move backwards, yes, you're giving up the f7 pawn, but now the, the knight hangs, right, do we understand that, guys, do we understand the virtual analysis, are we getting somewhere in this tutorial, okay, so, let's finish this now. Let's finish this uh, complication, this chess complication. And yes, this is why swinging the rook to c1 uh, from the from the f f1 square was not recommended now because uh, white is forced to give up as the b pawn was not developed. So now, uh, not developing the b pawn was very very important here because now uh, this allows black to defend perfectly, and uh, in this position, black has a bishop and a pawn for uh, no compensation, and uh, yeah, the knight is also under attack here, but uh, it is not recommended at all that you take the knight, because guys remember, if bishop takes here, then rook takes, and all... Uh, a bishop and a knight is worth six points, and a rook is worth five. But I think in this endgame, you would much rather have a rook. I still think this is completely winning for black. But you're not recommended to take the knight there or the horse on a, on a3, so I did not. And now attacking the rook, king c7. Rook to a1, attacking the pawn. And the knight is coming to finish the business. Right, guys? So something like the course of this knight now. If it gets to b6, uh, which was not played in the game, we just attack that a1 rook and just keep asking more questions. So we saw a5 rook captures, and now this un unleashes the beast. The uh, bishop is no longer arrested on the f8 starting square. Okay, guys? Rook a7 attacking the king. And now uh, stealing f7 pawn, rook a8. Now pushing uh, the a pawn to a3, but bishop captures is fine. My opponent here is going to gobble up the g7 pawn, and black is only plus two now in this position with uh, an extra pawn now, despite being down still a minor piece. And rook to f7 now just attacking that dark horse. But have no fear, guys, because this was a very special move that I found. Rook to f8 and... Only, uh, wow, imagine, no good squares. The best, the, the best move is just to capture it. Or just to go to g7, and in event, um, yeah, black is just doing okay. Black can even defend here, and let's just say, well, you start pushing up the board. Well, then just start attacking, and go, go, go. You can even push h5 here, and uh, black is completely winning. So no problems there. Instead, in the game, we saw uh, my opponent uh, concede his rook. Maybe he forgot that the knight was defending the d7 square, but sure enough, now uh, black is up uh, a rook and a bishop uh, for a single pawn. Okay. So I think you guys should be able to end this uh, game on your, on your own time, but let's just show now how to uh, finish this game with black, finish what we started, um, 
So rook f2, knight g5, checking the checking the white king with that dark horse, right? e5, d he captures an e5, check, check, forcing an exchange. H4, now pushing the c pawn, just push Charlie up the board. Push Charlie up the board, queen. And I think you guys can finish the game from here. But let's go back to this fateful uh, moment with knight to e5. It's about 15 and a half minutes in, guys. Congratulations on making it this far, if you've endured this far in this chess game. Okay, um, U.S. Virgin Islands chess, everyone. So, knight e5. Okay, well, it was just best, instead of going for that try, just to short castles, like we mentioned. And earlier in the video, we went over how to continue for black and just set up for um, a pretty normal chess game. I guess he thought knight e5 was normal, but just miscalculated after this, just giving up a minor piece. And this is what you get with 1,200 FIDE rated online opponents. Then again, I've also played some very strong uh, 2000s as well, had some good results. I've also played some 1900 Russians, 1300, 1400, 1500. And uh, this was a good game. So I want to thank everyone for participating and watching. And this was another uh, Indian game, with Bishop F4. And a nice little surprise with e5, but very easily defensible and easy to deal with. Or maybe not so easy to deal with given that middle game. Okay, guys, see everyone on the other side. Take care for now. Bye-bye.